Hi everyone, welcome to this Q&A session with EMA Design Automation. Today I'm here chatting with Terry Jernberg, a field application engineer and presenter for an upcoming webinar on solving SI and PI across the board with the Sigurdi Unified Workbench. More than ever, SI and PI issues are a commonplace concern that must be addressed for on-time product delivery. This webinar is going to identify common issues and analysis, as well as highlight how the tools can help you identify the ideal corrective action to solve problems at their root. Thank you for joining us today, Terry. Let's get started. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Talk tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in engineering. Well, actually, I started uh, in electrical engineering um, back when print circuit boards were, you know, really very different than they are now. Um, I got involved really in the signal integrity software because really nobody else wanted to do it. It was more analog stuff. That was the time when, you know, digital and analog people were kind of separating and I had a bit of an interest still on the analog side. So that's kind of where it fell and it's sort of rippled since then. And obviously the tools and the designs have gone you know, very much different than they used to be, but they're starting con to converge back now. And, you know, the analog world is here to stay. <laughs> so, Awesome. And as I mentioned, you're going to be speaking about SIPI analysis. Can you explain why this topic is important to discuss? Yeah, really, uh, it, it's a really broad topic, SI and PI, and it's one that, that particularly on the PI side, it's a, it's one that really is starting to emerge as um, a real problem in a lot of areas, kind of a hidden problem. And it's sort of a problem without an owner. It, you know, we have, you know, we've developed signal integrity engineers and we've got, um, you know, tremendous printed circuit board folks doing design. But it, this is an area that kind of falls in that never, never land. And uh, it's things that, you know, clearly the PCB folks have tremendous input on. And it's just something that we need to find a way to work together with. Uh, so um, it's, you know, it's going to be a, a, an area that comes up on every single board. And it's an area that companies worry about because the, when you find these type of problems, they can be in the worst of possible business circumstances. If you find it when it's in the field, it's catastrophic. If you find it just as you're trying to release something, it can, you know, wreak havoc on your business cycle. So, you know, Prevention, the tools are there for prevention. We've just got to get people into that mindset. And uh, it's things that all of us can do. We just need to, you know, spread the word. And that's what I'm hoping to do in this upcoming webinar. Awesome. So what are some common challenges in your experience that engineers should be aware of in this subject matter or in general? Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges really in the SI, and it's starting to sort of bleed over to the PI, in fact, a lot of it's related to power integrity, uh, is the fact that um, these problems uh, tend to be hidden. We don't, you know, it, it's not where we're looking. You know, we've developed some really good processes and tools and techniques on our SI stuff. And we've really started to focus in on things that are the real high speed things. And we've gotten some real good talent there and some skills there. So it's the areas that we're not looking at, these these crosstalk problems, these power deficiencies, uh, even things like EMI problems, they still pop up, they still occur, and they just occur in areas that we're not looking at. So we have the ability to do it. We're just not, you know, because it's so overwhelming and because these type of problems are, it's not on, you know, two or three signals anymore. It's on two thirds of the signals. So it's just become wider. The true experts have become more focused on the true high end, high, high speed stuff. And now uh, that's really pushed the technology forward, but it's left a bit of a void in the mid space where these focus folks used to be really concentrating on. There's a gap there. And I think that's an area where the, you know, where we can really fill in so we don't take a step backwards. We want to make sure we continue to move on into the, you know, hundreds of gigabits and 112 gigabit and the DDR high speed stuff, but we don't want to take steps backward in other areas of a board. A respin's a respin. You rebuild the board, it doesn't matter if it's on the, the net that you were looking at or the net you weren't looking at, it's still a respin. So we're looking at a global approach. We want to be able to do a very preventative whole board, you know, look and then die, you know, continue to dive down deeper in the specialty areas that are evolving. Okay, awesome. Can you give us a little preview of what you're planning on covering for the webinar? 
Yeah, we're really trying to bring, you know, things that I think people tend to almost exclude themselves from or things like uh, power drop analysis and, you know, capacitor placement, even things like loop inductance, things that, you know, we almost tend to, you know, particularly, you know, sometimes as PCB designers, but even some, you know, board level engineers and, you know, really up and down the, the spectrum, we tend to think that's someone else's problem. So what we're really trying to do is show that the tools have evolved to the point that we can all contribute there. And, and, and what we're putting in to get these answers out uh, isn't that difficult. And it's something that, that can can give feedback for every stage of the design from your, you know, defining your constraints to laying out your board, qualifying it at the end, even doing things like leveraging old revs and other designs or reference designs, all those things that allows you to, when you bring in the, a piece of a design, it allows you to understand it, not only physically how the parts are placed, but electrically what's actually happening and going on. And, uh, and that gives you a ton more freedom in terms of, you know, small manipulations of making things useful in your product setting. So it, it sort of frees your hands to do some modifications with the confidence that the tools are telling you that you haven't created a problem. In fact, you may have resolved a couple. That's always a good thing. Right. <laughs> uh, so what can attendees expect to walk away with after attending your webinar? Confidence. Confidence that this is for them, that we can, you know, at any level, we can do uh, DC drop analysis. We can get the capacitors in the right place. We can figure out which capacitors are best. We can find out if we're routing over splits. We can do things that are, we can do things that are preventative. So confidence that they can do this and that the tools are there, they can provide them instant feedback and it's not too hard. And we don't need, you know, certainly there's going to be experts and they're pushing the envelope on the high end and we love that. But we want people to go away with the confidence that we can fill in this gap and it really expands the tool set that they're already really good at. Uh, one thing that I, you know, continually admire about PCB designers is they don't let problems slip through. They literally become the funnel of so many different disciplines. Um, and they manage that. And this is just another one that they'll be able to, you know, the, the people will really be able to get the full picture of the design. And they're really remarkable in, in managing that. So we won't have these respins on things we're not looking at. We'll be globally looking at everything. Mm -hmm. So cool. confidence, I guess, in a word. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And do you have any resources you would recommend for people where they could go for further support? Yeah, actually, you're going to laugh, but YouTube, I mean, literally YouTube, I, they're, they're really, you know, there is very few classes in terms and, and vendor websites. I mean, it, to me, this is something that's a very visual thing. I think if you try to approach this and, you know, the professors will kill me, but if you try to approach this and, and understand the math first, it becomes overwhelming and you can at least easily rule yourself out. But if you approach it from a graphical video, see what's really going on and understand it, it's not that hard. And then then when you look, the math tends to make a little more sense and you really can judge how deep you need to dive into that. So uh, it's really, you know, it's very scalable. There's all kinds of resources for it. And I think the thing to do is get started really is, you know, look at, you know, find a problem that you're having. Is it a DC problem? Is it a cap problem? And get started on that specific area. Because then once we focus on a problem solving thing, then these techniques can spread. We can use the same type of methodologies to find an SI problem, to find a PI problem, to find a, an EMI problem, the same, you know, make a model of the board, exercise it the way the board would literally behave and look at the results. Those same techniques, you know, solve all kinds of different stuff. We just gotta get people capable in, in sort of digesting the outputs that these tools are giving us. It's all visual, It's which is great. <laughs> Yes, and I know you also did an article series on SI and PI for PCDNF, correct? Yes, yep. yes, we actually did. In fact, what we're trying to do there is exactly this, is bring the, the power sort of domain or the power world mm -hmm. down to reality, down to a place where people think, oh, I can do that. It's not this frequency domain, you know, black magic type of thing. It's something that people can address. They're, ch they're cutting the shapes. They're determining when to change layers. It's, these are the decisions that they're already making 
they're just doing it without the sort of the benefit of a tool that tells them the consequences of that. So we're going to hopefully be able to show people, you know, guidance as to, you know, the day-to-day -day decisions that they're already making, how wide to make the trace, when to, you know, when to put a plane in versus route, you know, how many vias to use to change a layer for certain current capabilities. So all these things, you know, they're decisions that people are, you know, going by rule of thumb or going by experience and, you know, remarkably successfully so far. But as the designs compress, that's going to be more and more of a challenge. And nobody wants to respin a board because they could have popped two more vias in their power planes. So uh, these are the things preventative, you know, that we're really going to go after. How, how can I approach these whole massive boards with thousands of nets and find out which ones I really need to go and seek out the experts and find out which ones I can manage with my own skill set, you know, from wherever that skill set is, either their PCB, board designer, or anywhere up the, up and down the sort of hierarchy, the contribution to the product, if you will. Okay. Uh, so how would you say this webinar will be differing from webinars on the same topic? What makes it unique? Um, I think what's lacking, and I'm not sure if it's completely unique because there is some other good material out there, but I'm hoping what this is, is a non-intimidating entry point. There's lots of stuff you can go out there and, you know, and get started, you know, and, and find information about and dig really deep into it. But where do you start? You know, and I'm hoping that this gives us an approach, you know, that we can say, okay, we've got the board, let's break it down into power and SI, let's look, you know, let's screen this thing, what signals should we really be simulating and what signals are going to be okay with rule of thumb, how do we make those decisions, but really a, a starting point that I hope will lead people to go to YouTube and look into the specific areas and really master a single workflow or a single task and then expand that. You know, kind of pick up one after. That's the nice thing about it. You can, you don't have to know it all. You can get one single task, be good at that, and and spread. You know, just start adding in. You know, what we call workflows, but other tools refer to it different ways. But basically, you know, the layer of problems, the caps, the routing of the caps, the cutting of the power planes. Each of these are very known tasks in the PCB process. We just want to give you some tools that help you you know, guide you in the decisions that you've already made, you've been making, mm -hmm. but, you know, are getting to be more and more critical as the board margins shrink. We don't, we used to think of, you know, margins in the, you know, up to, you know, a couple hundred millivolts. Now our whole swing is a couple hundred millivolts. So we don't have that to give away anymore. So all that, you know, we have to really focus on. And those are the things that, you know, where we give up space on the rule of thumb, we can gain it back by having the simulators and that type of you know, tool tell us exactly how much margin we have and exactly how close to that line we can get and still be comfortable, still not worry about respinning boards. Yeah, okay. And this kind of goes in that same direction of who would be an ideal attendee for this webinar? I think an ideal attendee for this webinar would be there's two really there's almost kind of two crowds and and, and they they, they complement each other in fact and and, and sometimes the, it's the same person or same persons but that would be the the pcb designer that's literally tasked with managing all these multiple disciplines coming in i've got thermal inputs coming in i've got mechanical routing stuff high speed constraints power things so that type of person who's really starting to have to make these decisions and satisfy a very wide diverse group of requirements somebody like that would be ideal because what this will help them do is juggle those priorities and understand the trade-offs and then the other flip side of that is the piece of the the board um designer or the board um engineer who's really I would argue the source of a lot of these constraints and, you know, an understanding that, you know, don't tell the, you know, a designer to get everything as close as they can, because that gives them nothing in terms of priority. Say this is, you know, get these things as close as you can, but at least give them some level of granularity, some decision making process, put the caps first, then the, you know, series termination or some kind of guidance there. And then be reasonable with your constraints. Understand that your constraints coming in are one set, but that the that the ultimate design of the board needs to merge that with 
often conflicting things. All signal integrity wants to do is push everything close together and all manufacturing wants to do is push it further apart. Understood, it's how we build things. And and the the, the mediator, if you will, is the, the poor folks doing placement and routing. And, uh, and without guidance from tools, you know, they do a good job. Don't I'm, I'm in awe of what they already do. But with the, with the tools, I think they can have the again going back to the confidence that they're making the right decision, plus some guidance, and and it facilitates communication back. So the so the suppliers of all these various constraints, we can feed this you know types of reports back and say, here we've moved these back this far. Here's how much it hurt, or you know, or it didn't hurt at all. You know, mm -hmm. so we have some, you know, quantifiable data where we do have to do some compromise. We can actually understand how much that compromise needs to be accommodated for either in the design or maybe it's fine. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and is there any advice you would give to uh, attendees after the webinar going forward? Um, don't stop. Keep reading this, uh, keep going. There's a ton of material. Uh, reach out, um, look at the tools, look at the demos, uh, try one. Um, and then probably find a problem on your board. Find something that's, that's you know, that sits at home, something that, you know, and then start to look at the avenues that are available, for, you know, of A, you know, what caused that type of problem and, mm -hmm. and then start to think in the mindset of how could I have, you know, found that in advance? What are the conditions that make that? For example, if you have a crosstalk problem, we know if traces run too close together for too long, that's the condition that makes crosstalk. Not every trace that runs next to each other is going to cause crosstalk, but that's the condition that needs to be present for there to be a crosstalk problem. So those are the kind of things that we can get into the mindset and then just, it, again, it gets back to the balancing game. They're always, always, always going to be juggling priorities, but this gives them some weapons to know which priorities can budge and which ones can't and how much they can budge. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add to promote for the webinar? Um, just that it, that it really truly is entry level. Don't be afraid of it. I don't care if it's your first board, if you don't know what, you know, PI is from SI, from EIEIO. I mean, don't be afraid of that. Get started. It's This stuff isn't hard. It's very visual. It's very graphic. And you'll be surprised. People will be surprised at how much you can figure out through intuition. We know we sort of have an idea, you know, just through, you know, how electricity flows. And if we don't truly, you know, visualize that, we can certainly make analogies with, you know, visualization through plumbing and piping and things like that. So these things make it so we can picture what's going on. And when you can understand what's going on visually, you'd be surprised at how much your attention is drawn to the problematic areas. And that's what these tools are really targeted to do. You know, we want you to be aware of what the types of conditions visually, graphically, not with a ton of math, but graphically the types of things that can run us into problems. And then the tools will help us focus on those areas in these really congested boards. And, uh, and intuition will tell us, you know, what, how to fix it. If it's too congested, widen the trace. <laughs> I mean, there's things we know. I mean, stuff, these are decisions, like I say, they're already making, and it just gives them some guidance and some quantifiable measurement as to how far to push things. Awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with me today, Terry. We're oh, really thank you. I'm excited to get some people involved in this. It's really a great topic. And, you know, prevention is the way on this stuff. And it's not out of anybody else's out of scope. People can do this stuff. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you everyone for watching and be sure to like and share this session and look forward to some more in the future. And we hope you will be joining us on June 3rd with Terry for the solving for SI and PI across the board with the Sigurdi Unified Workbench. Thank you again, Terry. Thank you.